Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about your plumbing system, the complete plumbing system, sewer, gas, and water. And stay till the end, because I'm gonna give you three tips to help you save money, and we're gonna do it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you how to fix your plumbing fast and free. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Guys, your plumbing system starts right here at your water meter. The city's responsible for the valve and the meter and anything before it, but if there's a leak on the other side of the meter at that threaded connection, anything there or beyond is your responsibility, and you may need a tool like this to get in there to turn the water off, and that could possibly save you thousands of dollars. I've got a large valve box here because I've got a bypass built in. As you see, I've got a water supply line and a return line going into the filtration system because I have a whole house water filtration. I also have a drain line here coming off of it so when it backwashes, it can drain into the clean house that I'll show you here in a minute. And also your frost proofs are part of your plumbing system. There's something that if it's just a washer, you can probably change yourself. But if you need to change out the frost proof, you probably want to call a plumber. Guys, here's where my two-way cleanouts are. This is where the sewer line runs from my house out to the city tap. The two-way cleanouts are great for two different reasons. Number one, I've got a cleanout here to run a camera or a sewer machine either in towards the house if it stopped up under there or come from the two-way cleanout out to the street if the stoppage is in the yard. We installed a P-trap underground off the two-way cleanouts because that is the backwash for the whole house water filtration system. This is your gas meter. This is where the gas comes into your house. Now, luckily for me, mine is right here at the house. I'm responsible for anything coming out, any leak on this side going into the house. The gas company is responsible for this side of the meter and anything underground. The good thing is, if there's a leak here, chances are it's gonna be where this riser comes up out of the ground. Since this is on the gas company side, they're responsible for it not you. The kitchen sink is another big part of your plumbing system. This is probably the piece that's used more than any others. Now, when I say it's part of your plumbing system, you've got the water supply lines coming in that go to the angle stops. You've got the supply lines that come up to the faucet. And the faucet itself actually has a cartridge in it that when it starts dripping, this is normally where your problem is. Then once it goes through the faucet, it goes down into the sink and goes down through the basket strainers, the pipe, the garbage disposal, and through the P-trap, and then out. So that's where it begins the path going through your sewer system to go out the front of the house as where we showed you earlier. Most things on a kitchen sink can be changed, including the kitchen sink. These are relatively easy do-it-yourself projects that you can take care of if you so choose to. Now, under most kitchen sinks, you also have the connections for the dishwasher. The dishwasher right next to it has a hot water supply line that goes to it, it has a discharge hose that comes in and either comes up to a vacuum breaker or a high loop vent to come over and drains into the disposal. These are things that are also easy for you to work on and easy for you to change. The electrical connection for a dishwasher normally comes out of the wall under it. And if you're not careful, you may want to call an electrician because you sure don't want to get shocked working on that. Behind the refrigerator, if your freezer has an ice maker in it, you should have a valve. Now there may be a line running over to your kitchen sink or something like that where the water line ties in, but normally if there's an ice maker, there's a valve in the wall behind it. It's normally a quarter turn ball valve that is sometimes easy to work on, sometimes not. It depends on what you have. That is one that normally, if you have a problem with that, you're probably gonna wanna call a plumber because chances are you're gonna have to open up the wall to change out the entire ice maker box. As you can see, this is an electric oven. If it were gas, there would be a steel pipe, black steel pipe, or a connection under the cabinet next to it or behind it with a gas cock on it where you can turn off the gas to it. Gas, as we talked about earlier, is also part of your plumbing system. So if you smell gas here, this is where you may want to call a plumber. Everybody knows the lavatory faucet and lavatory drain are also part of the plumbing system. These also have cartridges inside that if they start to drip, that is something that you can do as a DIY project, take it apart, carry the cartridges down to either a plumbing supply house or a box store to see if they can match it. I always recommend going with the exact same brand that it is. Don't use a knockoff. Sometimes you'll have problems with those. The piping underneath, 
Typical P-trap, nothing you haven't seen before. The thing is, you also have a condensation drain on this one, which is a one inch PVC pipe that comes in, goes in above the P-trap. That way, once it drains, it keeps sewer gas from coming back up through. So the drain pipe to your air conditioner can also be part of your plumbing system. And it's something you wanna make sure you look at and maintain. That way it doesn't overflow and cause problems below. Roman tubs are a little bit different. Roman tub, all the plumbing can be fixed from here. You can change out both cartridges, but you may have to get inside here if you have a leak underneath it. In order to get inside, this panel has to be removed. Normally, plumbers will tell you, we'll try to remove it, we'll try to remove it safely, but we can't be responsible if it cracks, if it's old, if it's brittle. So what I recommend to homeowners is the possibility of opening up the sheetrock wall on the other side to see if we can go through from that angle to get to it to see if we can make the repair. Now you've also got an aerator, just like you do on most faucets, that can be replaced. And then you've got the waste and overflow. Now the waste and overflow on a Roman tub are just like a regular bathtub. They're a little bit taller, so they may have an extension in there. The overflow can be removed with a screwdriver. You wanna be real careful though, if there's not a metal ring hanging over it to keep it in place, you want to make sure you're very careful when you take it apart or it may pop back in the wall where you're going to have a hard time getting to it to change it. The drain itself, you may need to pull the inside out so you can get to the shoe but, or get to the drain body that goes into the shoe, but it requires a special tool to remove it. This is something, all these are things that you can do as a DIY project, but make sure you have the right tools and watch the right videos to make sure you're doing it properly. Guys, the shower head, shower valve are all part of your plumbing system. I know you already know that, but what most people don't realize when their shower head's dripping, it's actually a problem with the valve. I get people call me all the time saying I need a new shower head because my shower head's dripping. Actually, what they need to do is change out the cartridge inside their shower valve. Now, these shower heads that have the rubber tips on them, when the shower's running, you can reach up there with your thumb and wipe those down, and those will help eliminate calcium and magnesium buildup in there, the scale buildup, if you don't have an anti-scale system on your house. You can also clean your shower head by taking it off and soaking it in vinegar for about 10 minutes. Now, one thing that you see that I have here, I have a ladybug. This is for hot water conservation. What you do is you turn the valve all the way to hot, open it up. When it reaches 95 degrees, the thermostatic valve in there clicks, shuts off the water, and you've got to pull this handle to turn it back on. But what that does is when I hear it click, I know my shower's hot and ready to get in, and I'm not just wasting water running down the drain. Because that hot water, I'm paying to heat it, and I'm paying for the water. Now, changing out a shower head, installing a ladybug, and even changing a cartridge are something that's pretty easy to do and normally a very good DIY project. A tool that's another easy thing to work on and an easy thing to change. If you know what you're doing or watch the right videos, it's not very difficult. You've got an angle stop behind it to shut the water off, which you want to do whether you're going to work on it or change it out. You've also got the fill valve, the flush valve, flapper, and handle on the inside that are all parts that are relatively easy to change. And as you see, my toilet has a bidet toilet seat which also has a water connection and an electrical connection. So you need to make sure that you've got electricity close if you decide to install one of these. Guys, my toilet has a remote control. It doesn't get any better than that. So on the pedestal lab, you've got the P-trap coming out of the wall where it goes up into the trip lever assembly. You've got your angle stops and your supply lines as you do on all lavatories. Guys, a pedestal lab is just like a normal lavatory. You've got a faucet, you've got the trip lever assembly, you've got your pop-up, you've got your P-trap, you've got your drain, you've got your angle stops and supply lines. These are also easy to work on. They're just a little bit tighter and you've got to be very careful laying porcelain on top of porcelain. I have seen some good plumbers crack their sink or crack their pedestal and that can be a problem. The washing machine box behind the washing machine has a hot and cold valve. It also has drain pipe connected to it. You wanna make sure your washing machine drain hose is stuck down in there properly. And the valves, if they start leaking when you go to disconnect it, can be taken off and replaced. But if there's a problem with them, you may need to open up the wall to change out the entire valve box assembly. Guys, the fireplace ladder is another gas appliance, whether you realize that part or not. 
You've got natural gas that comes in from the meter like we showed you earlier, comes in and goes to here. If you ever smell gas here, this is one thing where you probably want to either turn your gas off or just try closing this, make sure that it's shut all the way so there's no gas leaking through it coming out at the log ladder on your fireplace. Guys, your water heater is probably the biggest part of your plumbing system. It's the part you appreciate the most, I guarantee it. You've got the gas line coming in down on the bottom. You've got your control valve on front. There needs to be a drip leg here to help make sure you don't get moisture in your control valve. Also on your water heater, you've got your cold line in, you've got your hot line out, and then you've got your gas flue on top. You can go single wall vent going out into a top B vent where it goes through anything that may be combustible. Guys, a lot of people, when they install their own water heaters, they don't know enough to do it right and they can put themselves in danger. We've gone into houses that the gas vent, the flue was completely apart. We've gone in get houses where the TMP valve had a plug in it. And, and guys, that just makes things very dangerous. If you install your own water heater, check and make sure that you're doing everything right. Here in Texas, a homeowner can install their own water heater, but they've got to pull a permit and they have to get it inspected just like every plumbing company should do. So guys, on your water heater, here's your gas control valve that goes down to your burner assembly. It also connects to your thermocouple, which is something that tends to go out on water heaters and can be replaced. Here's the drain valve. This is the most important part for a water heater for a homeowner because at least once a year, after you get a new water heater, you need to hook a water hose up, run this hose out to concrete or into a five gallon bucket to where you can pour it down a drain but at least once a year. And if you've got a new water heater, I recommend even up to every couple of months, you wanna drain this. What it does is if you don't have an anti-scaler like we recommend, what it does is it breaks up the calcium and magnesium that's in the bottom, pulls it out, flushes it out, and that's part of flushing your water heater. Drain pan, drain going down, and over here, like I said earlier, you've got your drip leg, for your gas coming in and you've also got the valve over there to cut off the gas in case you need to turn off the gas to your water heater in case it's leaking or you have any other problems now if your water heater is leaking remember you've got the ball valve on top to cut the water off that way it helps eliminate the problem and keep so much water from leaking possibly into your house and as you can see i have a flotec anti-scaler hooked up to my house what this does is it breaks down the calcium and magnesium, leaves it in the water so it comes out like it should, instead of building up in the bottom of the water heater and building up on aerators and inside toilets, washing machines, ice makers, and everywhere else that it does. A Flotec anti-scale is a very big part of our water system and it helps us make our products last longer. So another Flotec product the water filtration system. Guys, we installed a whole house water filtration system here because when we tested the chlorine levels, they were extremely high. This is a great product because it will last about 20 years maintenance free and it's, it plugs in, it has to have an electrical connection, it backwashes itself, it's got a built-in bypass, it's got a backwash that runs out to the drain as you saw earlier and this is a good system to have. It helps take care of our entire plumbing system. Make sure you look at the installation video we did because we can install these in a garage like this or we can actually bury them in a the ground outside, whatever saves you the most money and gives you what you want. Now I'm gonna give you secret tip number one. Leave these caps loose. Keep them on there so no critters get down in there. But if this cap is loose enough and I have a stoppage from here to the street, if it backs up, it'll push off this cap before it overflows into my house. Yes, it'll give me a problem here, but I'd rather have to clean up toilet paper in my yard than try to get it out of my carpet or hardwoods inside the house. That is secret tip number one. Big tip number two, make sure you know how to turn off the water. Whether it's at the meter or whether it's here in the valve box at your house, if you have a flood in your house, shutting off the water fast can save you thousands of dollars. Secret tip number three, this is the gas cut off to your house. If you think you smell gas inside your house, then you shouldn't. Come out, put your wrench on here, and turn this 90 degrees. You want this valve to be perpendicular to the line, not parallel. Parallel means it's open and flowing like it should be. If you think you smell gas out here, before you call the gas company, spray it with soapy water, see if you see bubbles. That's how a good plumber finds his leaks. If you do see a leak, turn it off, Either try and tighten it or call a plumber. If it's over on this side, call the gas company and let them take care of it. 
That's secret tip number three, that will help you save money. Guys, whether you're turning off the water at your meter, whether you're turning off at the valve box, whether you're turning off your gas, or whether you're leaving the caps off your cleanouts, those are little tips that can help you save money. I hope you enjoyed the videos. Check out the other ones I've gotten. If you hadn't done it, subscribe now.